you craft nerds, how's it going? Um, so I'm bringing you another video um, with some information and updates about my necklace um, and sharing some other things that um, I've been inspired by that are related to either brown fraud or the dark crystal as well. Um, you know, just some interesting bits and pieces, or well, hopefully you guys find it interesting anyway, but I thought I, I would share these things with you and, you know, also a bit of how I'm going with the necklace. So a while ago now, I don't know how many years it's been actually, quite a number of years, um, my friend was traveling to Paris and while she was over there, she actually ran into um, Brian Froud and Wendy Froud. Um, I was so super jealous, I couldn't believe it. Um, they were exhibiting right near where she was, um, I think she might have been near Monet's garden or something like that, I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, she was um, around the area where they were exhibiting, saw the exhibition and knew how much I love his artwork and so, you know, she went inside and um, actually got to speak to both of them and meet them um, and then she got you know autographs for me and a book um, but what she also got while she was there was their address um, she mentioned that I made jewelry and so Wendy Froud gave her um, or their address and you know um, she teed up this uh, necklace to be made and all I knew was that she liked greens and blues and I, I don't think she had any idea of the type of work that I do or anything like that so she might have just thought oh you know maybe it'll just be a string of beads or something like that um, I'm not sure if Bernadette talked about what my jewelry is like or anything like that uh, but she was happy for us to, for you know, for her to get the address and take it back for me to make something. And uh, I couldn't believe it when Bernadette turned up and showed me all of the things that she'd managed to get. Um, so she got a couple of cards for me, which are signed by Brian Froud. You can see, hopefully, he always does this little kind of goblin creature in his signature. So he signed the card and then inside this beautiful card with his artwork on it. So, I, and I can't bring myself to ever use it. <laughs> um, I certainly will be keeping the envelope at any rate. So, um, and then there's another card as well. So, again, signed the card beautiful on the back. Oh, I don't think I showed the back of that one either. So beautiful, absolutely gorgeous. And then inside the fairy godmother this one's called. Love it. Um, and oh 2008, gosh that was a long time ago then, it was 10 years ago. This is the card from the exhibition. So, yeah, it's um, it was the 14th to the 29th of May, uh, which is like my birthday is right in there. Um, this is all in French though, so I can't read it, but um, I'll hold it up again in case you want to freeze it and if anyone knows what that says, you can let me know. Um, so anyway, that was amazing. And then she got um, a book for me of Wendy Froud's. She was going to get one of Brian Froud's, but she knows I have so many of his books. So she was uh, really worried she'd get like one that I already have. Not that I'd care because like, you know, she got it signed and everything. So it would have been amazing. Um, so it was signed by both of them 
and I mean like her work look at that I mean that's her sculpture so she sculpts the fairies that Brian draws um, and she does um, classes as well gosh if she was in Australia if anyone ever hears of her coming to Australia please let me know because I will be doing one of those classes straight away um, look at that so amazing so that was brilliant and um, yeah so I was so excited when I actually held in my hot little hands the address um, of the frouds and so I of course was going to make something that I thought was you know amazing hopefully um, I wanted it to be a fairy inspired necklace because of the obvious and um, you know uh, make it really beautiful and everything like that so anyway I ended up I wanted to have big beautiful copper fairy wings because I thought copper with the green and the blue would look absolutely amazing so um, I didn't know how to go about doing that and I wanted to make them myself um, if I had a kiln, I probably could have got like copper PMC and, and fired it and that sort of thing. Um, but I, I didn't. And um, I mean, even now, I do have a kiln now, but it's not set up because we don't have a shed to put it in yet. So, um, yeah, so what I did was use polymer clay and then used copper leaf on top of it. Um, and to make sure that it didn't... Um, break or anything like that the wings because they're quite thin once you make a wing um, I put some um, steel back backing um, that I cut out you can't see it but it was just there for stability so that they never bend and snap um, and then I uh, forked out for this really beautiful opal as well and um, put that as the centerpiece in the, at the bottom and I had I sculpted this little fairy face um, so you know I looked up tutorials on how to sculpt faces because I didn't want to just use a mold I thought that's not special so I actually sculpted the face and put copper foil on that as well and um, you know put the opal sort of at the bottom I even had some um, wool uh, either wool or silk I can't remember now that I used for the hair of the fairy um, and you can see little bits of that. I didn't want too much because I didn't want it to sort of get damaged or what have you. Uh, and then, you know, just lots of blues and greens sort of swirling around and a fringe of, you know, similar colours and everything like that. So, um, and she loved it. And she actually um, wrote back to me. Um, I've still got the envelope. <laughs> Which, yeah, um, so... I'll never get rid of that and then the letter so it was a typed letter but she signed it at the bottom all right so what does the letter say dear Lauren what an amazing surprise your package turned out to be when it arrived a few days ago the necklace really is spectacular I was going to ask if you were sure you wanted to give me such a beautiful and generous gift but you sent it so I must assume you're happy for me to have it those truly are my colors it will certainly wear and it, I will send you a photo when I get Brian to take one of me I'm so impressed by the quality and intricate detail of your work you not only have a beautiful sense of color and design but a magical touch that adds something very special to your work Brian and I have tried through our careers to bring healing and light to everyone who is somehow touched by our work when we are told we have inspired someone it means that we've succeeded in doing what we feel is our reason for doing what we do. So thank you for being inspired, for telling us, for your generosity and for giving something of beauty to the world. I hope we can meet someday if we ever get to Australia. Who knows, it may happen. We have a new oracle deck and book coming out next month. I own that. Um, the Heart of the Fairy Oracle. And you never know, it may just lead us to Australia this time. We're excited about it, me especially, because I wrote the text this time. I hope people enjoy reading and using it as much as I enjoyed writing and putting it together. 
Once again, Lauren, thank you very much indeed. I'm often given gifts by people, but rarely ones as beautiful and accomplished as this. I'm getting all emotional. It just really meant a lot to me. It really did. Um, whew. Yeah, to go out of her way to write such a beautiful um, letter of thanks for that necklace. Um, and as she said, you know, she's given things all the time. Um, so to actually, yeah, write and sign that letter is just really really amazing um, I never did get that photo though so Wendy if you're watching I very much doubt it but if you do happen to ever watch um, can I have that photo <laughs> um, and I did try and like she gave me their email address and things and I did try an email but it didn't work I'm not sure why so um, I just left it at that I, it was such a special um, exchange of I don't know, magic even, that I just thought, no, that's okay to, to leave it like that. And um, so I never did write again or um, after the email bounced, I sort of left it at that. Um, I don't know. I just, I don't know why, really. Um, so anyway, I hope you enjoyed that little story about um, the necklace that I made for Wendy Froud. Um, and hopefully you're enjoying seeing the progress um, of the necklace that I'm making inspired by the dark crystal and who knows maybe eventually they'll get to see um, this necklace that has um, inspired me you know um, all of the inspiration that I've got from the movie um, has gone into this necklace so if they ever do see it I hope they do like it and um, enjoy seeing someone you know being inspired by that so this is just a little bit of a sneak peek at the progress of the necklace um, I'm going to be doing a more detailed video about this section of the necklace um, there's some stitches in there that I think you know could be really interesting for you guys or for any of you who are beaters and want to see the more in depth of you know how I actually do this part um, yeah just stay tuned for that video but if you've watched the planning stage of this necklace you'll know that this part was really reflective of the Skeksis so it's very dark and I've tried to really put in those curves and um, you know some of those shapes and things of the Skeksis and like the tower that the Skeksis are in and that sort of thing um, So I'm pretty happy with how it's coming along guys well thank you so much again for tuning in I hope you are enjoying this series about the dark crystal and um, my necklace and different elements of inspiration um, that I've had and received over the years from you know the frouds and the dark crystal um, hit that subscribe button if you want to see more stuff from myself um, and you want to keep up to date with what's happening with the necklace and then the costume and then the goblin ball So um, I hope you do stick around um, and for the rest of you. I'll see you next time. Bye craft nerds <laughs>